Today we're going to tie a fly called the Sulkin Sculpin. I'm starting out with a 2-aught Predator X hook from Partridge, 210 denier flat wax nylon. I'm going to start at the eye and I'm going to lay a little thread base and then I'm going to create a little bump of thread. This fly rides hook point up in the water so we're using a set of large painted dumbbell eyes. I'm just going to secure that down to the hook shank. Now I make this fly in a few different colors. I do a black one, a rust, a yellow, a olive, and a white. Today we're going to make an olive. So once I'm happy with my eyes nice and secure, I'm just going to take the hook out of the vise. I've got a magnum rabbit strip that I cut. This is a olive with brown bars. I'm going to line up the end of the rabbit strip close to, it's right over top of the barbell eyes, and I'm going to poke my hook through the top of that, and I'm going to get this back in my vise. I'm going to bring my thread all the way back to the bend of the hook, pull that rabbit strip forward, wet my finger just a little bit, and we're going to brush that rabbit hair back and we're going to secure that down to the shank. I'm going to roll my hook over. I'm going to move that rabbit strip back. So now we're going to be working on the belly of the fly. I'm just going to lay a nice base down and then come all the way back just a little bit before the secure point on the rabbit strip. Now I'm using a foxtail. This is just a red fox. You can use arctic fox. I'm going to cut a little chunk and I'm just going to brush the shorter and the fuzzy fibers out of there. I'm going to cut that at a little bit of an angle, kind of like what you would do with bucktail. I'm going to secure that down. I'm going to do this three times total to build up the underbody for the sculpin. And one more. I'm going to make this one just a little bit shorter. We're going to butt that right up against the eyes. Now what I'm going to do is take a chunk of red EP fiber and I'm going to V-tie that, which means I'm going to fold it in half over my thread, put it right dead center on there, fold it on itself, and then tie it down. And what this is going to do is give me red gills on the underbelly. We'll flip our hook back. I'm just going to be using a little bit of gold flashaboo. You can use any color you want. Just a few strands. I've got about three here. Even those up. And again, we'll V-tie that on the thread. And a little clump on each side. Tie that down. Now we're going to take our rabbit strip, pull it forward. And I'm going to secure this rabbit strip down. I'm going to cut off the excess and now I'm going to wrap almost a figure eight side to side over top of that rabbit strip to really make sure that it's nice and secure. Now I'm going to take two pheasant feathers. Um, you can use whichever feathers that you want from the pheasant. You could use rubber legs in place of the feathers. And this is going to be our little side fins. So I'm going to put one of these on each side. We'll secure those down nice. And now I'm going to tie this off. And here's the tricky part. The deer hair head. So what we're going to do is we're switching now to the Vivas 200 denier GSP. I'm going to lay a base right over top of the flat wax nylon. 
I'm going to take my head cement, which happens to be the fish pimp hard headed. I'm going to put a little bit down and now I'm going to grab some of my belly hair, not my belly hair, but deer belly hair. We'll cut a pretty good chunk. I like to use a lot of hair when I build these heads. What it does is it creates a really, really tight, compact head with no gaps from the barbells. So when we talk about deer hair, we usually talk about pencil thicknesses. So I'm going to show you about how much I have here. I would say it's probably about three pencil thicknesses, maybe four. I think you can see that pretty clearly. Fair amount of hair. So I'm going to start with the top of the hook. I'm going to bring my thread. I'm going to hold this parallel to the hook. I'm going to do two loose capture wraps and then I'm just going to grab underneath it. Now when I compress this, what I'm going to do is pull my thread down towards my eyes at an angle coming forward towards the eye of the hook. And then we're going to bring one more wrap through that just to secure it. And now we're going to roll our hook over. Once again, my head cement, get a little dab on there. If you don't use glue in your fly tying, it's silly. You should. Glue is good. Glue is your friend. I'm going to take once again, another good chunk, the same size as I did on the top of the belly hair. I'm just going to even it up. And if you notice, I'm pulling out all the short hairs and all the under fur. Okay, so we've got this evened up. And once again, parallel to the hook, two loose capture wraps. And I'm just going to pinch that. And again, if you watch the angle of my thread, I'm pulling forward towards the eye of the hook. And I'm going to bring one more wrap through that just to make sure it's nice and secure. And now I'm going to brush that hair back and out of the way. And I'm going to work my thread up and bring it back to the hook shank in front of those eyes. Make a little thread base. And now we're going to do the same thing, only this time, just like we were going to stack a fly, we're going to roll this from this position to the bottom of the hook shank and then we'll put another stack on top of the hook shank. This time what I'm going to do though is I'm going to cut those points right off. They just get in the way. So I'm going to bring my hair around in front of my hook shank and I'm going to hold it at about a 45 degree angle to the hook shank. Two loose capture wraps. I'm going to start to compress it. I'm going to move my hand out of the way so you can see. I'm going to walk that entire clump of hair to the bottom of the hook shank. I'm going to grab the eye of the hook and then I'm going to compress that down. And you can see here, you've got bare hook shank on top. Dab a glue and then we're going to grab the rest of our hair. Get all those short fibers and all the fuzzy stuff out, all the under fur. Even that up. This time we're going to go parallel to the hook shank, two loose capture wraps, and I'm just going to pinch this in place, compress it down, and I'm going to bring one more wrap through, and then one more again, and really secure it. We're going to take the fugly packer, and I'm just going to push that hair back a little bit so that the eye of the hook pops through. Again, we've got a pretty dense head on this. Now I'm going to bring my thread up and through the hair, find the eye of that hook, and then I'm going to grab one of my little plastic squares. I'm going to cut a slit, bring my thread through it, and then we're going to wrap that plastic right around the eye, and I'm going to use the packer just to push it all back once again. And now you can see you've got total control over that hair using that piece of plastic. So now we're going to form our thread head, whip finish it, okay. So this is what we have right now. Now we need to make it look like something. I'm going to move my vise out of the way. 
And now what we're going to do is carve this up. So I'm going to use a double-edged razor. Remember this rides hook point up, so I'm going to start with the belly of the fly. I'm going to find the eye of the hook, and I'm just going to cut straight back. And you want to be careful, you don't want to go too far, but you don't want too much hair on the belly either. You'll know when you're right because the bottoms of the dumbbell eyes will just start to show. Okay, so that's good. You can see right there, nice and flat. Now what I'm going to do is take my razor blade from the eye and I'm going to cut straight up and I'm going to create a square shaped head to start and then we'll round it all out and smooth it in a minute. Always start out when doing deer hair. You always want to rough shape it first. You can always take more off, but you can't put it back if you cut too much. Okay, so you can see that's kind of our rough shaped sculpin head. Now what I'm going to do is just clear the eye away a little bit, the eye of the hook. And then we're going to smooth it out and finalize the shape of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round the front of this up just a little bit more. And then I'm going to round over the sides. And you can see the way we put that hair on, there is absolutely no gaps where that dumbbell eye goes. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of hair that we're using and the angle when you compress that hair and pull it down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut those eyes out so that we can see them. So I know approximately where they are because when we did the belly, you can start to see where the eyes are coming through. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to cut that excess hair right away from those eyes. And I'm going to cut that all the way back so that we can pull those feathers right out and then and then you're going to end up having your little fin sticking out from the side of the sculpin. It's one side and now we'll do this other. Just even up this belly a little bit. And I'm going to pull this fin out. So now you can see you've got your eyes exposed. The feathers are sticking out. So what a fish sees from top is a realistic sculpin silhouette. Put this back in the vise, we'll put it in upside down so you can kind of check it out. I'm going to bring the camera all the way around it. Thanks for watching.